This video is sponsored by MyBookie. You know what my favorite part about this time of year is, guys? Sweater weather. Leaves on the ground and threes from downtown. That's right. For some, it's fall season, but for the rest of us, it's ball season. Put those pumpkin spice lattes aside and grab a beer because pro and college ball are tipping off and there's no better way to feel a part of the action than to have a stake in the game with my bookie. If you're the kind of guy who likes to bet a little to win a lot, try a parlay. For instance, if you like a couple of the big favorites this week, parlays are perfect because they let you bet multiple games together for a much bigger payout. Either way, if you're gonna bet this season, do the smart thing and go to mybookie.ag because no one gives you more ways to win. The NBA is back in action and it's time to turn your attention from carving pumpkins to the crazy year of basketball we have ahead of us. The offseason was especially eventful this year and the league was thrown for a loop. Use your basketball knowledge to prove you have what it takes at mybookie.ag where they make it easy to play and even easier to get paid. And if you join now, MyBookie will double your first deposit. Use promo code FLIGHTMIKE to activate the offer. That's promo code FLIGHTMIKE to double your cash. Visit MyBookie.ag today. You play, you win, you get paid. Last night we were treated to some fantastic basketball. I don't know about you guys, but when I was watching the Clippers versus Lakers, their very first official competitive Battle of Los Angeles, I was out of my seat for all of the third quarter. That was absolutely electrifying. But there were a lot of glaring holes, and that's what we're going to get to today, especially if you're a Laker fan. There was a lot of problems with the Los Angeles Lakers as a whole that were just so apparent to me. So what's going on, guys? Your boy, The Flight Mike, back again with another NBA video. So guys, if you see a lot of my videos recommended to you guys and you watch them fairly consistently, but you haven't hit that sub button, make sure to subscribe because as soon as I hit 500,000 subscribers, I am going to go full-time on YouTube. I'm actually a little nervous, guys, because Monday's when I start school, and I really hope I could continue making content at the rate that I am. Hopefully, it'll work out. On top of that, I am giving away a pair of Off-White Air Jordan 1s on my Instagram page because we hit 10,000 followers on Instagram. If you Once we finish this giveaway, guys, let me know in the comment section down below what else you would like to see given away on the channel because I'm down to give away stuff. I just need ideas as to what you guys want want given away finally huge shout out to my two patreon patrons grant and icy jalen brown twitter if you guys want to support me on patreon it's in the description down below but i would much much rather you guys hit that notification bell then support me financially in any way whatsoever so yesterday i was watching the the laker game and if you guys followed me on instagram you probably would have seen a couple of ig lives of me losing my mind absolutely as i was watching but there was a lot that i liked and there was a lot that i noticed and this is just the stuff that was super apparent to me now bear in mind i am not going to make a what we learn from the los angeles lakers every single time they have a game i'm gonna probably do like a mid mid-season like report card and if there's something super super glaring to me then i will probably correct that as well but the issue they ha the lakers for the most part have a ton of issues but let's start with the los angeles clippers really quickly because they were literally i think the way that they were made is just absolutely phenomenal i think a lot of us take for granted the identity that the clippers were able to create for themselves within a three minute span when they acquired both paul george and Kawhi leonard and i'll never forget that fateful friday night when i found out that news but when the when the clippers acquired Kawhi leonard and paul george immediately everyone thought of like one thing and that's the fact that the clippers are a defensive juggernaut you have players like patrick beverly montrez harrell you got Kawhi leonard you got paul george two players that could play very well on both sides of the floor but on top of that they have a phenomenal supporting uh, supporting cast and a lot of us didn't even pay attention to the fact that they were coached by doc rivers who has a phenomenal coaching pedigree has won a championship before and has coached absolute legends when he was in boston i feel like the clippers are significantly deeper than the lakers are and it's tough for me to admit this but not only that they have an identity and that identity is commitment to defense and we saw it last night the clippers absolutely did a phenomenal job locking down lebron james and anthony davis in the second half but i think there was more to it 
than Anthony Davis and LeBron James getting locked down. I think they were just exhausted because the one first thing that I was watching last night, and it just became very, very obvious to me as I was watching this more and more, the Lakers didn't really have many people to lean on other than LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Danny Green. And first of all, I have to tip my hat off to Danny Green for scoring the most points uh, by a Laker in his debut in, in Laker history. 28 points. Fantastic, fantastic game for him. And literally, Danny Green backpacked the Lakers back into the game at some point. But it's crazy because coming into the season I expected there to be a lot more and of course we could use the injury excuse saying that both Kyle Kuzma and Rajon Rondo are were out last night but so was Paul George really there there was a very good chance that the Lakers could have won this game now Jamal Crawford tweeted this out last night saying that if the Lakers need the Lakers need some more scoring power and I couldn't disagree more. I don't think the Lakers need an additional player that could score the ball. I think they're all capable of putting the ball into the basket to a certain extent. Yes, it would be nice to have another player that could score the ball, but you don't want a player that is going to sacrifice defense for offense, and that's what Jamal Crawford is. Obviously, the preference here is to somehow come up with Andre Iguodala, but I don't know how they would come up with him either. The main issue is is one of the biggest flaws I saw is the fact that there was a huge problem on the offensive side of the ball. The next thing is I saw Anthony, I know Anthony Davis has to play power forward and it's very important for him to play power forward, but in terms of how spacing looked when Anthony Davis was on the floor with JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard, I feel like this completely caps the Los Angeles Lakers ability to be versatile. Like, I understand Anthony Davis prefers playing power forward. I understand that's the way he, it was when he was in the uh, when he came into the NBA. He was a power forward coming into the NBA. But I think in today's NBA, he's best suited as a center. Now, another thing that really, really confused me, and this just made me scratch my head completely, and I saw many tweets about this last night, and... This is just, I, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. When Le, when Anthony Davis came to the Lakers, when Anthony Davis finally got traded to the Lakers, we all thought of the monstrous pick and roll between LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Honestly, like, think about it. That's probably the very first thing you did in NBA 2K20 when you played as the Los Angeles Lakers. I bet you you handed it off to LeBron James on the very first play, clicked that L1 button to get a screen from Anthony Davis, and dished it into Anthony Davis. Like, or ran the pick and roll with them. You know what I mean? Like... I was expecting this entire Laker offense to be based around the Anthony Davis, LeBron James pick and roll. Hell, even the Dwight Howard, LeBron James pick and roll could have been nasty. I was expecting a ton of pick and roll last night and I didn't see any. I, I barely saw any. I saw a lot of post entry passes. And the thing that bothered me the most is I saw the Lakers make plays that the Clippers were anticipating. For example, there was this one play where I saw the Lakers literally, LeBron literally try to make a post-entry pass to Anthony Davis, and the, the entire, whoever, the, the Clippers defense really saw this coming, immediately stole it, and it resulted in a turnover because everyone knew that's what was coming. And I do think it's nice to see the post-up game in today's NBA. I feel like it's a forgotten and lost art that most teams are moving away from, mainly because they're so obsessed with being the next version of the Golden State Warriors. But I don't think it's necessary to 100% base the entire offense around Anthony Davis's post-up game or LeBron James's post-up game. It's something that they could use. I don't think it should be the main thing that they use. I don't think that should be how they run their offense. They shouldn't abandon the post up altogether, but I feel like there would be significantly better offensive play from the Los Angeles Lakers if there was more pick and roll. Now, my next issue 
is the fact that the Lakers need better defenders. And I this is what I meant when I said that the Clippers have this great defensive identity that the Lakers don't have. It seems to me that the main defenders on the Lakers team are LeBron, Anthony Davis, Danny Green to a certain extent is a great defender. Dwight Howard is a great defender. And honestly, another thing, a side note, Dwight Howard did amazing last night fulfilling his role. He understood who he is. He understand why he understood why he was brought here. I feel like he is going to do very very well with the Los Angeles Lakers this year. He's not going to be an all-star again. But he is not a distraction. I feel like he fits in perfectly. And I have to tip my hat off to Dwight Howard. But it seems to me that the Lakers need significantly more defensive firepower. It seems to me that they were... Def- they were. To give you an example, last night, do you know who was guarding Kawhi Leonard? It was either LeBron James or Contavious Caldwell-Pope. The six foot five Contavious Caldwell-Pope was on a man known as the Claw who has a crazy wingspan and ability to contort his body around the rim and get whatever basket he wants. There's a problem with the Lakers in terms of that. They That is a huge mismatch and they do need someone to come in and lock up the opposing team's star player when LeBron James wasn't on the floor. Now, things that I did like to see very quickly that I did really, really like to see last night was the fact that Danny Green really stepped up when he was needed. Dwight Howard filled his role perfectly. I would have liked to see more from Avery Bradley. I feel like if Avery Bradley showed up a little bit or the Lakers bench showed up the tiniest bit, we could have been successful last night. But all in all, I think the Lakers have a ton of potential. I'm just really disappointed in Frank Vogel's inability to install the offense that is clearly made for this Los Angeles Lakers team. Like, come on. Everybody around Anthony Davis and LeBron James on the floor, for the most part, was able to shoot the ball unless if JaVale McGee was in or Dwight Howard was in. Put in Anthony Davis at the center position. Put in Kyle, When Kyle Kuzma comes back, put him in at power forward. You know, LeBron James at the three. Danny Green at shooting guard. And, I don't know, find some point guard that could hit threes. Quinn Cook had a bad night last night, but for the most part, we know what this Lakers offense should be. We all know it, and it's up to Frank Vogel to start installing it. Let me know what you guys think. If you made it to this uh, to the end of this video, comment, I took flight. I really want to know your opinions on the very first Laker game. Aside from that, I'm your boy, The Flight Mike, and I'll catch you guys later.